Hello and welcome to the very first Tennis for Millennials podcast, or TFM for short. In this podcast, we'll be discussing the latest tennis news. And, uh, well, I'm your host, Caleb Mazoya. I'm a tennis enthusiast from Wales. And today, I'm joined by a good friend of mine. Well, I'll let you, I'll let him introduce himself. Thanks, thanks, Caleb. Uh, first of all, it's great to be to be on the first ever podcast. I'm really excited to be here and, yeah. and looking ahead to the future. So yeah, my name is Lewis. Uh, I go to the same uni, uh, UCFB, studying business and marketing. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've recently set up a, a tennis society, actually. Yes, yeah, so which, which I'm part of. I'm part of. Yeah, yeah, I was lucky enough to. Well, he was lucky enough for me oh, to, oh. to let him come in. So yeah, it's been good. Uh, we've been sort of trying to host some sessions. We're right next to a. A football and tennis centre just across the road from our from our campus, so it's really really easy to to get across, nice and easy for people to get there. And but we're trying to still we're still trying to get um, members, aren't we? Yeah, um, it hasn't been the easiest thing because it's, it's, it's just, like, yeah, it's a football uni. It's situated in a stadium, so people will be more interested in football than tennis yeah. naturally. Yeah. So the idea was obviously. Because the UD, the courses are focused around football and people play football, watch football, study football, was to take the attention away from that and to give people and students a new opportunity to represent the university if mm. maybe they want to get involved in a new sport or maybe football isn't isn't their best best sport. So yeah, it's been it's been good to have a few sessions but But you're looking for a competitive a competitive uh, team as well. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean that was that was the aim. Uh to, to be obviously playing against other universities in a few years' time and to really establish uh, a foundation there. But the majority of the people, so we've got about, maybe I'd say, maybe about 10 members at the moment, yeah. solid members. Yet to, yet to meet them all, though, because some of them have been busy. Yeah, people sort of tend to come on different weeks. Um, and we we need to have uh, a lot of people coming uh, to each session before the uni will be allowed to have multiple days where people can come play tennis. So we need to get the members in, 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 in. I'm just hoping people come for the kits, to be honest. I've seen the, yeah. the kit you're looking for kits, a uh, nice white Wimbledon style. Yeah, it's nice. I thought, you know, one of the first things about setting up a society, especially a new sports team, is getting a kit. So I contacted a few sports manufacturers. Mm. and oh, you've got contacts. You've got contacts been going, mate. Contacts, man. Let's try to... Under Armour, Nike, Adidas, all the big ones. Obviously, I've had to to go for Samurai, which actually I'm actually really happy with. You know, really nice kit, like little blue tinge around yeah, the side, for the UCFB colour, and we'll get the logo embroidered as well. So, old Dale and Student Services is sorting that out for us at the moment. Old Dale, everyone loves Dale. Everyone loves a bit of Dale. Everyone you know. Loves a bit of Dale. That is. Anyway, on to today's uh, podcast. Uh, recently, in the news. Um, some of you may have heard as. Naomi Osaka, the world female world number one, has a split of her coach, Sasha Bajin. I think that's how you pronounce his name. That was incredibly no, offensive. I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, Sasha, for offending your family and <laughs> <laughs> lineage. Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. I don't know. I think he's German, apparently. He's okay. German. Yeah, he's German. I was surprised by that. Uh, she said she didn't want to put success over happiness. Yeah. It was a bold claim, you know, whilst she hasn't obviously come out with a lot of the details and the ins and outs of her relationship, she's obviously, you know, from saying that shows that she wasn't happy with him. Uh, But do you think the cause of the relationship breakdown was her or do you think it was him or what do you think was sort of the... Um, Honestly, my first reaction to this was, how could you not be happy at the moment? Yeah, you've you're winning everything. Well, you've won two slams in a row. What is going on? So it was, it was a strange one, and um, I don't know. I think the cause, because she's, I think, she, like if you follow her on social media, she seems really nice to be honest. She seems like a, even after a, like um, she won her most recent title, she was she was like shy to speak in front of the crowd. So she seems like a really genuine, mm-hmm. yeah, genuine yeah. lady. But um, so I think the problem lies with. Uh, coach that's where I think it lies anyway yeah it's interesting. I mean like you, you touched on social media there it's it's a weird one isn't it because sometimes you can think you know football players tennis players sports icons can be really happy from what they're posting on social media but yeah, actually yeah. it can just be a mask they're putting on so and it's, it's it's hard to uncover the real problems behind a relationship yeah 
But you know, at the Australian Open, it was it was starting to show, wasn't it? A bit. Yeah, she said strange, and it was starting to show. And it's strange because according to the Guardian, the German had guided the Japanese player to back-to-back Grand Slam titles, as well as the summit of the WTA rankings. She used to be number 70, 72 in the world, and now she's uh, number one. Yeah, which is, I mean, it's incredible. I mean, you can't doubt the, co- the coach must be pretty good then, do you think? Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's got it's, it's to be a huge part of where this has come from. You know, women's tennis is obviously not the same... As men's in the set in the sense where you have someone that dominates for such a long period of time, yeah. you know Djokovic dominates is dominating at the moment, uh, and you know Federer dominates for a long time. Whereas women's, you know, the top dog is always changing. I mean, so to, in order to find that level of consistency, I think the coach has had to have a really really big impact. I agree with you to a certain extent, although the likes of Serena Williams, she's mm-hmm. been tough again for a long for a yeah. long long time to be honest. And yeah, yeah. I think that it's the only the diff the differentiating thing between the men's and the women's one is the fact Naomi is so so young. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's incredibly young. In how, how old is is she exactly? I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, all the things to research, I didn't think that would. Uh, we'll check now though. It must be early twenties though. I'm sure of it. Should we do a little guessing game to see? Okay. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna go twenty two. What are you saying? Twenty one. 21. Oh, that's low, that's low, that's low. You reckon 21? Oh. I was thinking 22 or 23. This could be really embarrassing if she's like 29. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she's, uh, where's her page now? <laughs> <laughs> You've just typed, so Caleb has just typed in to oh. try and find her age. No, this was the, this, Naomi Osaka no, that was the, fires her coach. That was the that's previous, what, that was that's the previous what he's typed in. For yeah, research. mate, I'm sure they will come out that with her That was my age. research. Oh, look at that. 21 oh, yeah. years old. Fair I am play. a genius. Fair play. I'll you know, give you that one. I don't know what I'm saying. You knew what her age was all along, did you? You just you just wanted to sound sound clever in your, in your podcast. No, no. I've, I've researched a lot about her, but except for that thing, for some reason, <laughs> I left that thing a out. A small thing. Yeah, yeah, small details. Yeah, yeah. Fine lines, man. Back, back to where we were. You were talking about, obviously, Serena Williams and then talking about her age. And yeah, because she, um, to win her first... Uh, Slam. She had to beat Serena Williams in that controversial, controversial final. I don't know if you can remember what happened, um, but we don't need to get into that bit. But um, I do actually remember. You remember? Um, yeah, I do. I mean, it's just. I think it's a bit of a sensitive subject because people will get, people will tend to get angry over what you say. Yeah. Regarding as well. I think you should steer away from that. Yeah. That subject. Um. But um. Just, yeah, she, just can I say one thing on the okay, subject? It was just. Do you think? Obviously, I have the utmost respect for Serena Williams. I think what she's done in in the tennis world is absolutely incredible. But do you think maybe a reason why her frustration grew so much was because she could see someone with such great potential? Ooh. You know, okay. obviously the game itself was had its controversies. Of course, yeah. we won't go into that. But maybe she was fearful that this is someone new. You know, this is someone that's going to take over the tennis, the female tennis world now. Yeah. So someone that almost sort of decrowning Serena. And also, I didn't think of that aspect. That's quite an interesting one. But previously, like leading up to the final, she'd um, soon she you know had her first child, didn't she? And she was like mm-hmm. coming back from that. Of course. And I think she wanted to win her first title since having a child. And I think the situations maybe got to her head that she's getting beaten by someone who was far younger than her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a mental, sort of a mental. Uh, yeah, thing. I mean, it's almost hard to believe that someone at the age, at the age of twenty one, is was was you know beating, let alone competing with yeah. someone like like Serena. So yeah, and, and that is where I think the coach, the coach must be a yeah, quality coach. Definitely, definitely. I mean, he's obviously worked with Serena. Yeah, yeah, so. he has. Amongst other big names, Victoria Azarenka, Carolina Wozniacki. Mm. So. He's he's a, he's a big name, and he actually um he won the WTA Coach of the Year award for two thousand eighteen. So yeah, I'm, I mean that's not surprising really, is it? You know. Yeah, I know he led a, he led a Naomi to two um two Grand Slams in a row, which is quite impressive. Two Grand this, the two Grand Slams is impressive as well. Like Serena was was dominant, but predominantly in Wimbledon and for a while. But for someone to come in so young and to and to win two Grand Slams. You know, one is, you know, it can be seen as an upset sometimes. Yeah. Or it yeah. can be seen as, you know, a great run of form, building momentum. And, and that's what's, you know, kicking you on to do the business. But 
two Grand Slams shows that level of consistency that you know that maybe the coaches is, still is the characteristics of of a future champion. You know, yeah, it's possibly the character. I think. I think the evidence is pointing towards having a good coach, to be honest, for these... You do love the coach, don't you, mate? I didn't say I love it. I'm <laughs> just saying that all no, this is no, pushing yeah. towards the coach, it is. man. Yeah. He's, they are the unsung heroes, though, aren't they? Yeah, in, to be in honest. Tennis, you know. Yeah. They do have a... But there is, a, there's usually, there is usually a team around tennis players. You see them always yeah. pointing up to the box and everything. Yeah. And all that. Yeah. All, you, so, just, just to ask, did, was... Um, because I don't, I, I don't know much about uh, the coach and his coaching staff. Was when they parted ways, uh, Naomi and the coach did the whole coaching staff leave? I don't think so because um, she mentioned um, in a statement that she didn't want people, she didn't want him talking behind her back in the box. She said that, so I think it's she's probably received word from other members of her team saying, "Oh, he's been saying this, he's been saying that." And mm-hmm. She's she tried to mm-hmm. like live and go through it, but. No, she probably just couldn't take it anymore, I think. Yeah, no, that's interesting. And the fact that, you know, when did go back to football, when Rini got sacked, his whole coaching staff yes. got sacked, and that was a fallout with the club and... The players. With the, with the players and with the manager. But the fact that in tennis, she, if she's keeping the whole coaching team apart from him, that sort of drives a, a wall between them. Which mm. would indicate a real relationship breakdown that something had, had to have gone wrong. Unless the team weren't happy with him either. So, like, mm-hmm. yeah. he was the one, like, needle in there, annoying everybody. Or... He's, he's been he's been isolated, clearly, you know, yeah. from everything to do with Naomi. Um, and to be fair, I like the link you've made there between um, Manchester United and, and and tennis. I know this is a tennis podcast, but there we is... We can get a bit of football in there. there is, on, the, yeah, yeah. There is a similarity there, you know, with uh, Manchester United, with Jose Mourinho... Because they had won you know, three titles, if you count the Community Shield. It's not treble by any by any means, but um, mm-hmm. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Come on, mate. Just uh, I'm actually am a United fan, so Caleb needs to be careful with what with what he's what saying. If, if he wants me to next. reappear on, on oh, the podcast, oh, okay, it's like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there were comparisons. You could you could you could say Pogba is like Naomi, and then Jose is the coach, mm-hmm. and although they're winning. They're not happy, yeah. And then, but the difference is Naomi didn't underperform to show that the coach was bad. Yeah. Whereas there was rumours that the players were not performing well. Yeah, and it's obviously you know Pogba can't sack Mourinho himself. He he would have to make a statement in order to try to do his to do the best he can to make sure that he's gone. Do you whereas think that? Whereas Naomi wanted to sack. Yeah. His, you know, it's up to her. She has yeah, complete, she's... complete control over, over that situation. But those statements, what do you mean by the statements? Like playing, performing badly or saying something to the press? A or? bit of both. I don't think Pogba was very respectful to the club or to Jose Mourinho to in, in what he was doing. Um, there's you know there's all this speculation about whether Pogba just stopped playing for his club. Personally, I do disagree with that. I don't think you can just stop playing for one of the biggest football clubs in the world. But mm. I don't think he was giving it, giving it his all. Because so I think a statement is more what he was saying to the press and how he was coming across. Yeah, he was saying stuff like, "Ah, oh, there's some things I'm not allowed to speak or something like that." Mm-hmm. Which was, if you know, if you shouldn't, if you've been told you can't say certain things, then don't tell the press that you can't say certain things. It's yeah. sort of it's, yeah. I mean, that shows a real wall between the manager, the club, and the player. If he feels that he can't go and talk to the, the people inside the club oh, the people inside. and they would have to go to the press in order to make a statement and make people's attention turn towards that subject and I mean I could talk about football all day but I think we need to get back to the topic at hand don't we, we? Do. <laughs> I was just going to say Pop was so influential because if one player can cause almost havoc in a team yeah imagine that's well that's the thing you know and that's that shows the potential you know leadership qualities He's so influential oh. that he can swift and, and change the whole mentality of a team to, to 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 playing badly. He can do that the other way around, and in a way that's in, a, in, a, in another. Yeah, that's probably what he's doing at the moment for the, for them, and that's why you know, he's being more of a leader now. He's not being that sulky on the on the training ground with those yeah. footage, with those. And um, returning to uh, Naomi Osaka, there was um, 
the press had been speculating that the reason they'd split was because of um, money, money issues that she was, it was sort of labelling her as a bit greedy or some other reason because they didn't know what was going on behind the scenes. Which she got, uh, she said it was hurtful. She got upset yeah, about she it. She wasn't too happy with that, was she? No, she wasn't. Understandably so, though. You know, it's a new face on the scene. Mm. The last thing that she's going to want is for people to think she's come into the into the industry just wanting to take as much money as she can to benefit from sponsorship, celebrity endorsement, stuff like that. And I mean, yeah, that's a good. That's a good point. I, don't, I, I generally because I just think she's such a just a nice a nice person that she wouldn't do she wouldn't do that would she exactly I I I I think that I don't think she would do something like that and I think yes yeah, she's that's why she's turned and and said what she said because she is gen- genuinely outraged by by the allegations made against her could have you know she's shown a bit of clarity saying that oh, I don't want to sacrifice uh, happiness over success and all that but. Um, Maybe a bit more clarity of the situation could could have helped. So there's less speculation on why all this happened. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's everyone's dream, especially the media, is that they would just be able to report the whole story, how the relationship broke down, why the relationship broke down. and But, you know, I just feel like in, in, in tennis or in football or in any other sport, you're never really going to get to know the... And it just came out of nowhere, to be honest. Yeah, just yeah. Out of the blue, parting company with your coach after winning two Grand Slams. Like, okay. Yeah. What's all this about? I know. It's kind of strange. And I, w- I also wanted to dive a little deeper into the coach because um, we mentioned his previous uh, previous people he'd coached, Serena Williams, Azarenka, Wozniacki, and and all those. But um, I just I sort of got a feeling that he has this. He doesn't he doesn't get along with female players. I'm mm-hmm. getting the impression that yeah. they must have they, they, the reason why he left those previous ones possibly could have been a falling out or something. You think? Yeah, um, I mean, as I said before, I, I don't know too much about about uh, about the guy or, or or about the previous players that he worked mm-hmm. with. But you know that track record would would definitely suggest that there's something not quite right about the way he handles his players because it's possibly he could be possibly of coach Serena like her prime and imagine it could be a pattern of when you're doing the players are usually doing well and then they sack him because he's he's just not making them happy he's almost like a football manager in tennis isn't he like he's he's done loads he's like like Mourinho he did loads with Milan and he goes he does loads with Chelsea and he goes yeah I see that do you know what I mean it's sort of like he's he's trying to become have that decorated CV you know rather than just really focusing all of his efforts onto one player you see what I mean yeah get some coach of the year to be honest so it works yeah I mean obviously it it highlights just how good he is Um, Mm. but at the same time if someone was looking to to have a coach who would give that expertise, yeah, one hundred percent go for it. But if someone is looking for someone more long term that he can really develop that person, that she or he can really develop that personal relationship with, then maybe you know it it wouldn't be it wouldn't be that the wisest choice to go to go for him. Yeah, I think that's a. If we move on to the male tennis players, yeah, go for it, mate. Because um, another big news in the. New story circling around at the moment is uh, Roger Federer's return to clay. Mm. He hasn't been on there for a long time. I think it was two years. Two it's years. Twenty fifteen, actually. Twenty fifteen. Yeah. Sure? Yeah. He because lo- the last time he played in the French Open, mm. he lost to Stanislas Wawrinka in the quarterfinal. Twenty fifteen, Roland Garros. Okay, and he hasn't played since. You said. Uh, well, I know he hasn't played in the French Open since. I'm not sure because he's, he's been avoiding clay. He might have played in the smaller. He might have played in the, in the smaller, smaller competition. Well. I but, or but I know the last time he played Roland Garros was was 2015. Okay, because this could be a whopper because Federer, Djokovic, and Nadal, all three of them should be there. Mm. And um, Nadal is. Clearly, the favorite. I think he's, he's, you th- uh, I think he, I think he's the favorite. Clay is his surface, in my yeah, opinion. No, so he is the king of the clay, one hundred percent. But you know, Djokovic is one of three people to stop Nadal on the clay. Wow, one out of three. The other one is Robert Stodling, 
and I'm not sure about the last one, but like that's incredible. And he's in form as well. For it, Jock it, it reflects Nadal's obviously dominance in the clay, but it also says you know just just how effective Djokovic could be on the clay, and if there is someone that's going to be him, it's Djokovic. It, it, it is Djokovic. I'm not sure because um, Nadal, yes, dominates on clay, and previously he's been beaten by Djokovic recently in the um, U.S. Open, I think. So I think he'll be looking for revenge if they ever meet on clay because he knows this is my surface. It's his hometown. You're going to you're coming to my turf, mate. You're coming to my house. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> And he's gonna lay the law down on Djokovic. He's gonna be I four think. guns blazing, isn't he? Mm, that's why. That's why I think anyway. Well, I mean, just back on yeah, the Dow and Djokovic. I thought the Australian Open final was gonna be an absolute cracker. I think everyone did. Mm-hmm. You know, the Dow previously was 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 very strong. He, he won a few Grand Slams in the last year, mm. uh, in the last couple of years. And he was number one at the time. Is that right? Yes. Djokovic sure. was obviously coming back to that form we saw a couple, a few years ago. Mm. But Djokovic just absolutely took him to part. Took him apart, didn't he? It was it was sad to, to watch. It was a real shame. I was because Nadal had been amazing up until the final, and then yeah, all of a sudden, yeah, I, don't whether, I, don't, I don't know whether Djokovic showed his class or Nadal was really poor. The one thing I really admire about Novak Djokovic that I don't think is a quality many tennis players possess is his ability to preserve energy. Okay. Djokovic can always go to that next gear. You know, when Mario played tennis, he would just give absolutely everything on the court, and his opponent would know that. Would know that. I think that's the same with Nadal. Federer, you know, I think he's good at preserving his energy very well. You know, he doesn't show any emotion, but Djokovic can just when just when you think he's he's cracking. <laughs> he just comes out with this new level, you know, and I think the the stamina of of that guy is is incredible, and and in that sense, I think he's he is definitely the best best in the business. Yeah, that's an underestimated um, attribute of Djokovic. I think no one really looks at how he can go on for so long at mm-hmm. such a demanding level all the time, and because and I also think. Because he's so demanding with the way he plays, it does lead to some injuries. And his previous injury led like left him out for a, yeah a long, long time previously. Exactly, and that really affected him mentally. Mm-hmm. He, his his headspace was awful. And Djokovic, well, you know, tennis itself is is a game completely played with the mind. But mm-hmm. Djokovic himself, when he's in that right frame of mind, he is unstoppable. He is genuinely unstoppable. But that comes the other way. And that's why it took him hard to reach the form he previously reached. And that's why it took him a long time to come back and, and, to, and to rival with the greats. So I think Djokovic right now is flying. You know, he's playing some of the best tennis of his life. And he's just taken the Dow apart. He's going to have every bit of confidence that he can go and do and that he can go and do and beat him in, in Roland Garros. So I think, you know, when you look at it from Djokovic's perspective, yeah, he's, he's, he's definitely the favourite in his mind. But obviously... The Dow. It's just going to be a really, really exciting tournament. tournament. Yeah. I mean, we're basically talking like the the, the final is going to be Djokovic yeah, and Nadal. But I think that's only because Federer hasn't played for for two years. He also but. came out and said that he's returning to the clay more for for the entertainment part of it. Okay, you know, I think Federer. I mean, people say this all the time. Is reaching the end of his career. I don't know, but he's Doesn't he's like he's. Maybe in his last few years, and I think rather than just missing out a tournament this year, he wants to he wants to play. You know, he wants to make the most of all the Grand Slams, and Roland Garros is a great occasion. And Ferrer, has, you know, he's obviously won the competition. Mm-hmm. I think so, in two thousand and nine, picked it up. Yeah, I mean, he's never beaten the Dow, but it's difficult to beat the Dow. It's very difficult yeah, to beat the Dow. Rafael Nadal is. Do you know what else I like to watch on clay? Who? David Ferrer. Ferrer, uh, yeah. They used Spaniard, to like yeah. to watch David yeah. Ferrer. I mean, he did knock out Murray a few years ago in Royal Garage. <laughs> and I'm a I'm big, big Andy Murray fan. I mean, a lot of, even English, British people say, oh, I don't like Murray, I don't like Murray. No, what, what happens is, when Murray's playing well, he's British. Oh, when don't he's, say this. When he's don't not playing well. No, this is, this is what, this is what like, no, the yeah. English ones do, don't they? Yeah. They do this all the time. It happens to wait alone to not often to Welsh people, but it happens to Scottish people sometimes. When they when they're playing well, they're British. 
when they're not, you can go back to your yeah. little nationalities. Yeah. Just, just to let you guys know, I am actually Scottish, just despite how English yeah. and and from from the south I sound. I was born in Scotland. Both my both my fa- parents are Scot- Scottish, so that's why I have quite a close connection to Murray, and that's why I don't like hearing that he, when he loses, he's Scottish because I know it is it is true deep down, and it hurts. They do that all me. the time, man. Hey? Why can't well, they do that all the time? Why can't they say like when he's won something, the Scotsman? Yeah, they ne- they never yeah, give. They do they? It's not that they should be giving the whole nation credit, but they just you know they take him for for their own, don't they? Mm. The English when <laughs> they just steal him. And God, use it in occasions. But Murray is a Scot, you know, he's a Scot through and through. And it's sad the situation he's in, though, you? Uh, it's, I mean, obviously it wasn't a plan to have a conversation, but, no, but we can, we, we've always got time for Andy yeah, Murray. Yeah, everyone's got time. <laughs> just think that, you know, he was this unknown man who sort of was just steadily working his way through the ranking, up the rankings, and, and then suddenly, you know, he's in the final Wimbledon. Mm. And, and he lost and then that was when we got to see the real Andy Murray you know he, he got a bit emotional when, when he was giving the talk on centre court and I think people were just like you know we, that's when the turning point was people wanted to side with this guy they knew him more, him more than just Andy Murray the tennis player I and think it was like he's a genuine brick going up against the Federers the Djokovic's and you know holding his own but always coming falling a bit short yeah. up until that Wimbledon final I think but he, he won a few years later, I think. Yeah, yeah, I know it was it was the next year, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And and obviously he won Wimbledon again after wow. that, and yeah. the U.S. Open. So you know, people there were always always that sort of you know debate: is Andy Murray just a constant runner up, or is he ever going to actually go all the way? And I think well, the first step was the Olympics, wasn't it, in twenty twelve? Mm. I remember my being with my dad. We were actually in Barbados at the time we were a really nice holiday and we were, watch- we were watching it okay. on TV and my dad was just in shock for five minutes when he won it because he was just so used as a, as a Scot so used to them fall Scottish people and Annie Murray falling at the last hurdle so when he finally got over the line and with that ace I, I think that was again a huge turning point for him in his career I just think the home crowd Olympic final it, I think it was written in the stars yeah, that he was going to win that definitely. final. And I just, you could just see it happening. Yeah. So I was chuffed for him. It was great to see. And obviously then people were like, oh yeah, it's the Olympic final, but it's not a Grand Slam. And, and then, what, well, then what does he do? He does the same. He does the Grand Slam. Wow. Andy Murray, that is. Yeah, I think, change my prediction, I think Andy Murray's going to win the French Open. I think he's going to go and do it is this year. Is he going to play? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he will play this but year. I don't think he'll play because... Um, he said in his like his last interview, he wanted to go out on a high Wimbledon. Yeah, I don't know if the, that's gonna happen. the support is going to be insane mm-hmm. at Wimbledon. I was, I mean, I was lucky enough uh, to be able to go to Wimbledon last year. Actually, wow, we, we all got to go to Centre Court and, and we saw we saw Federer, and it was great. But it's not the same when it's not Andy Murray. Andy Murray at Wimbledon. What more can you want in a day? You know, he, he's like he has to be there. It's going to be. That's why I think he's saving himself for for this tournament. Because if he goes before, gets injured, and he might not make it. Yeah. It's not going to be the same. It would be absolutely it? heartbreaking. I mean, he's got a choice, isn't he? He can either have another operation and and, and risk that going wrong, and being, oh, yeah. or he can sort of keep playing and struggle through the pain like that. But either way, it's it's hard. I mean, it, I would love nothing more than to see Andy Murray on the tennis court for the next few years. Mm. But he is a sports icon you know he he's huge for Scotland huge for Britain and I think people would probably just feel a bit more at ease if he he went with what he wanted rather than what the fans wanted yeah it's you know so I, I will always back him mm-hmm. same here to be honest may not be my favourite player my favourite player is Nadal but I love the geezer to be honest Nadal is a cool tennis player He's he's just, cool. I don't know, he's just so... The way he does it, with his left hand. Is it his grunts? <laughs> nah, <laughs> nah, I don't think the grunts is what gets me, but... Um, it's just... like I think he's just powerful on his... And he's awkward for the opposition because he's left-handed sometimes, so you think you've caught him out, mm. but then you remember, no, he's left-handed, it's not a backhand coming up. So it's, he's just smart the way he goes about, I think. I don't. He's got that banana shot. Have you seen that video? Yeah. Please, just, <laughs> oh mate! I've watched, do you know how many times I've watched that? 
from Leighton. So. It was against Vadasco, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, mate, that shot was incredible. It was so good. Hopefully we can see more of that. Yeah, oh, I'd love to. The, he's just an entertaining tennis player. Like, the, it's, it's almost like this. it's satisfying Like it's to see the way his shot yeah. goes out. Like, the left hand, I know what you mean. Like, yeah, he's obviously a great guy as well, but it's just his playing style that's so, so entertaining, so great to watch. I think he's sort of turned himself, him and Fed have turned themselves into a brand. Mm. They're like, everywhere they go, they have support. They know, even if you may not be into tennis that much, but you know, oh, Nadal's coming to town or Federer's coming to town. I'm trying to get tickets for this. Mm. But Djokovic... He doesn't have that same... No, he's not a brand as yet, I don't think. He's not the same. I think it's because Nike have helped them as well, to be fair. Federer and um, mm-hmm. Nadal will be well, sponsored by well, Nike. Djokovic has also obviously made that recent change, hasn't he? He went... Yeah, he was at Uniqlo, I think, where, for a bit. Where is he? Where is he now? Lacoste, I think he's gone back oh, to yeah, Lacoste. Lacoste. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which hasn't got as much of a... Yeah, well, I mean, he probably sees Federer, Nadal, Nike... You know, mm. he probably doesn't want to go over there as well. Okay, yeah. And then he would, and Nike would obviously have maybe a conflict of interests, wouldn't they? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not saying that, you know, you have, as a sports brand, you have to pick one and stick with one. But like, I mean, I think there's a reason why Man City and Nike and United are Adidas, you know. Big rivals tend to not use the same. I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. Barcelona, like, Real Madrid, yeah. Like yeah, okay, it is, I can there see is that. like a, I can see that. It's, it, I mean, like I said, it's not like set in stone. It's a rule, but Djokovic, I think what he did, what he tried to do was find his own brand, mm-hmm. and maybe it didn't work out as well for him. You know, people didn't start buying Uniqlo when he went there, no. and that may be reflected in how big his support base was. Whereas Andy Murray, when he made that switch to Under Armour, Under Armour actually saw a huge spike in sales. I think, you know, Under Armour actually were dominating in the UK tennis market for a little while. The, the I mean, I I know I bought loads of their clothes. Yeah, because people wanted to wear the things Andy Murray were wearing. You know, yeah, to be honest, because he's an icon, a British icon. They look exactly. up to him, so whatever he's wearing, they want a piece of that as well. You know, oh, exactly. They want to embody the Andy Murray. Mother, embody mother. <laughs> Is that what he calls him? I don't think so. Mate. <laughs> I think you just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> Quite possibly. Yes. Yeah. Have you seen the video of? Um, where Michael McIntyre goes and, and surprises Andy Murray. In, like when he's sleeping or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh okay, guys. Awkward. All right. If you haven't seen it, go and find it. It's, it's, it's Michael McIntyre. He, he, late night. What's it called? Um, oh, I can't remember what it's called. Midnight Game Show. Is that it? Midnight. Yeah, I think it might be called the Midnight Game Show. I can't remember. It's a shit one. It's no that that the name of the the Michael McIntyre's name is in the title, isn't it? No, oh, no, no, no. That the the actual. Um, comedy show is called something different but the little segment where he goes and surprises people late at night is called the late night game show and he's done it for people like Gino DeCampo and obviously Andy Murray as well and it's just so funny definitely go and watch it like Murray's reaction he's in shock for about two minutes and then in the last minute he just suddenly oh, it's brilliant <laughs> I just, I'd, I'd be annoyed if somebody allowed you know, gave access to my room. I don't know how they Some got Some comedian. I don't know, because he was on his own, Murray. He was, was, in, he? he was in a, I think he was in a hotel. Okay, me, okay, uh, that makes a bit more sense. So, if he was in his home, then I'd be, I'd be, I'd be fueling. Yeah. <laughs> oh, was that, oh, honestly, <laughs> it's so funny. You need, you, you need to watch it. I'd be fuming, I would be, to be honest. I was just having a look at the rankings. Mm. Djokovic first, Nadal, Zverev. He won his first... Um, ATP tour like finals of, um, last year I think Zverev. beating in form Djokovic mm. which was pretty impressive do you know Zverev? Uh, not familiar with Zverev me. is someone that like, always kind of annoyed me if I'm honest okay not because I know who he is really just because he would always be so high up the rankings oh, and okay. I would just never ever see him when I watch tennis do you know what I mean? yeah like if you see someone third in the rankings you want to think right let's see you at the semi-finals of the Grand Slam exactly let's see you consistently exactly. there Exactly. But that's not what he's like. He just he picks up his points in the ATP, but yeah, he's exactly. not a constant figure, is he? That's exactly what he's been accused of. And the first time he actually like got to the semi-finals and the finals consistently was at the ATP final, and people want to see more of it. Yeah, but I think that's what comes with being a, a tennis great. You you need to consistently be in the at least the top four every yeah. Grand Slam if you're going to be the best. 
because he's in sort of the same generation as Naomi, so yeah. he needs to follow his suit. Wherever we're, it means. St- we're still waiting and waiting and waiting. Like it's been Djokovic, Nadal, Federer for such a long time. I mean, Murray obviously sort of joined in yeah, a little bit there. They but, played to him as well. But like, come on, how long? When? When is it going to be? When are we going to have someone who breaks into that top two and stays there? Exactly. It, it reaches it, finals and semi-finals. You know, everyone's the, the the main three, the main four. They're getting a bit older now. Who's it going to be? People thought it was going to be Dimitrov. Mm. Dimitrov is so inconsistent. Mm. Could it be Zverev? I'd I'd be I'd I'd be open to it. I think he I think it will be him. Yeah, he's got a lot of potential. This guy has. I mean, the, the, I think it's the fact that people, the, the, like youngsters, have a huge chance to to really go for it in the tennis industry. I'm not saying oh. Keep calling it industry. I'm thinking business <laughs> in the tennis in the tennis world. I'll go yeah. there. But I think what what highlights the fact that people are just the youngsters are just not taking their chances. They're not breaking through. Is the fact that Kevin Anderson is is, is is thirty two years old and he where is he where is he in the rankings now? Fifth. He's fifth. You know he's not first, but he's fifth. He's suddenly broken through. Found yeah, form. fair yeah. play to him. But that should be where the youngsters are. Yeah, you know, they should be. That. They should be like on the tails of the of, of, of the greats, not Kevin Anderson, thirty-two year old Kevin Anderson, who has somehow found form as well. Oh, what have we got against Kevin Anderson? No, I don't have anything against <laughs> Kevin Anderson. I mean, he got to the, 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 the semi-final and played some. He's played some amazing games of tennis. But yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, it, it they, the youngsters should be looking at themselves and thinking that should be me. Or it just comes with experience, perhaps. Yeah. I mean. Who was the last person young to break through? It was, the, it was the, like the three. Well, look in the women's game, what's happening oh, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, in the women's game, you can see that. Uh, but in the men's one, it was it was the top three again. Like, Federer broke through when he was young. Nadal as well when he was young. Well, Becker won Wimbledon when he was 16 years old. Yeah, so it's been going on for a while. Like... It's there. It's it can. I'm not. I mean, I, I, I'm not saying I could go and do it, <laughs> but I'm just saying that it's it's there for the taking. Especially when the Dow the last couple of years, or well, maybe not last. Let's say from from about 2015 until about 2017, mm-hmm. there was the gap was there. Yes. Murray wasn't as much in the picture. Well, he still was. Djokovic had slipped in form. Mm-hmm. The Dow wasn't playing anywhere near his best tennis. Yeah, a, you know, that situation left Federer a new Jerome, opportunity yeah, to, dom- to, to dominate, dominate again. Yeah. B, the youngsters should be there consistently. But, but they didn't it, take their opportunity. Yes, all the like, barriers and all the big names are going to be knocked out, but he's still left with Federer. How do you overcome that last step? To be he's the oh, I'm not saying that they should overcome the last step. I'm just saying they should be in and amongst it. Yeah, There was no consistent player under the age of 23. Twenty five, mm. even. That was consistent. Yeah, yeah. Dominic T M. Yeah, yeah. But he, even Dominic T M. You know, he's he's another master in clay, isn't he? Yeah. But you know that he gets. Has, has, he, ever, a certain stage, has he ever been in the semi final twice in a row? I don't think. Apart from those smaller tournaments. But that's what I mean. If yeah, I would say, in order to be someone who is is really making a name for yourself, you need to be in the semi final of a Grand Slam two times in a row. Okay, in a row. Not, not win a Grand Slam. Not get to the final of the grand, the semi final, the last four. Mm. You know, I think that is where. But does anyone ever remember the semi finalists? So that's the thing. I'm not saying that they're going to get all the fame and, and the reputation and, and and the credit. I'm just saying that that would be a way, and of evidencing, someone who is seriously who is serious about about winning a grand slam, who is serious about knocking the top ones off the spot. But yeah, that's a good show. Anyway, discussed a lot in this first podcast. It's been pretty good. Yeah, it's been good. We got into it. I know a lot more about about tennis than I thought. Yeah, I did, yeah. to be fair. Yeah, you're seeing you speaking a lot. I was just here listening. <laughs> I was just in listening mode, man. Uh, Sorry, mate. So whenever the next big thing happens, we'll probably do this again because this the story, the main story was uh, Naomi Osaka's situation. But there's lots of tournaments coming up, uh, and also the French Open coming up, I think, as well. Yeah, which should be should be good. So we'll probably, if you if you're available, we'll probably do another podcast then, unless I can find someone else who's remotely interested in tennis <laughs> in a football uni. But, um, I'll see if I can find someone to recruit for the 
Yes. For their society as well. Anyone out there want to play tennis in Manchester? The go, go to UCFB. Yeah. Go to UCFB. <laughs> or don't. Or don't. Or don't. <laughs> I can sneak you in if you want. I can sneak you in, mate. I'll, you get a, get a free kit. Mm. You get a free kit. The what rackets, more? Rackets are provided. Rackets are provided. provided. So Indoor, state-of-the-art, not really, facilities. <laughs> what more can you want? Just come along. Have a mm. hit. You can beat Caleb. <laughs> Honestly, it's not hard. <laughs> <laughs> He's coming for oh, me. I'm like, joking, I'm no, joking. to be honest, it's true. I haven't been coaching, man. I need, I need coaching. Oh, I'll be... I'll give, I gave you a little bit of coaching, didn't I, Caleb? Well, not coaching, but like... Uh, I only shot me on my own podcast, big man, right? Nah, I'm joking, I'm joking. Okay. Anyway, tune in. Uh, like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. And... Uh, like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Just follow us on our various, follow the football student on yes, Instagram on the various channels you can see above and um, follow the football student on Instagram and make uh, sure you do it. It's much better than Caleb's social media. No, it isn't. I'm joking. No, I'm it joking. isn't. He's <laughs> honestly Caleb is a video mastermind. Trust. You should, you should go and check out his stuff. Definitely. Trust. That's the nicest compliment you're getting from me. That's, that's good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, bye.